Honda found a way through engineering and persistence and perseverance and commitment they were able to make the air cleaner harder to get to. Welcome back to Cruise Man's Garage YouTube channel. I just finished having breakfast over here at Einstein's Bagels in Carrollton, Texas, which is where I come just about every morning for my morning coffee and Atkins food bar, which I've been doing for many years. And I'm getting ready to head home, so I thought I would uh, check in with everybody. I'm using econ mode as you can tell here if you can see that far away with this wide-angle lens. I like econ mode just because I'm cheap and it does seem to save a little fuel when you're driving around town. So I'm able to average about uh, oh anywhere from 42 to 45 miles to the gallon around Dallas-Fort Worth when I'm riding and uh, you know just locally without any serious highway riding I might get on the tollway for a few miles but most of my riding is uh, under 45 to 50 miles an hour it's a beautiful morning we had a little rainstorm last night and it cooled things off a little bit so it's about 83 degrees just a slight breeze and beautiful sunny day supposed to get up to about 93 today which for this time of year is actually pretty mild pretty nice as you can see uh, we've got our 8 o'clock traffic it's about uh, actually about 735 in the morning right now but it'll let up here in a second and I'll be able to get out on the road somebody asked me the other day how I got started working on my own Goldwing which I thought was a quest, something I've never really talked about very much. But uh, most of you know the story about my first Goldwing, which was a 2005 model I bought used off eBay. Actually, it was at a local Suzuki uh, automobile dealership here back in 2006, and it was a 2005 anniversary edition Goldwing. The reason I started working on my own Goldwing because I am not a mechanic by trade. Most of you know that. I'm a tech guy. But I took the bike early on to a Honda dealer. I'm not going to mention which one. And I was having a... I think I was having a trailer hitch installed. I'm not sure. But I got the bike home. And I noticed that one of the chrome muffler guards was kind of hanging off they hadn't put it back on correctly so and I paid you know probably two or three hundred dollars to have the trailer hitch installed so I was a little disappointed that they didn't put the bike back together correctly so I was able to take off a couple of parts and fix that thing that they had screwed up and that was my first hint that you know going to a dealer does not guarantee that you're gonna have the service done correctly and I had another instance where I took the bike in to have new tires put on and as soon as I left the dealership I started noticing on the ride home that the front brake was shaking when every time I would put on the front brake the front end would start shaking violently so I took it to another dealer to have them check it and sure enough one of the rotors was bent the brake rotors and you know what they did they probably took the front wheel off to put the tire on and they probably dropped the wheel and it fell on that rotor and bent it so that's when I decided you know some of this stuff I can do myself um, I didn't trust them you know I've heard too many horror stories since that time 
about you know guys taking their bikes to a dealer to get the oil change just an oil change and the dealer either doesn't put oil on the bike or they screw up the oil filter or whatever and I figured you know I can screw it up and save the money and I started out small you know I think I started uh, doing like an oil change on that 2005 Goldwing and I thought you know this isn't really that hard it's really not that hard and little by little I would start taking parts off the bike and figuring out how to put them back on and you know the the Goldwing is an intimidating motorcycle to work on when you look at it because it's very sophisticated it's got a lot of moving parts a lot of just a lot of parts a lot of fasteners and I started joining some of the online forums and you know just talking to different people online and finding out that you know a lot of people work on their own bikes and uh, that's how I got started I mean I just little by little I would take on a different task and I figured the worst thing that could happen would be I'd break something and have to replace it and even if I did what was it you know worst case scenario would probably be a hundred or two hundred bucks and you know I just saved that much just in a few oil changes in dealer labor charges so fortunately I've never broken an expensive part I have broken a couple of tabs here and there over the years and you know I've screwed a couple of things up but nothing really outrageously expensive nothing uh, maybe 20 or 30 bucks you know no big deal but I've saved a fortune in dealer labor charges and I think a lot of you guys have too a lot that's why a lot of you like to work on your and I get enjoyment from working on the bike it's not just uh, saving the money I actually enjoy getting in there and taking it apart putting it back together and just kind of seeing how everything works now if you like this video I'm gonna take a second here to promote myself if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and I'd appreciate it if you take a second to click that little subscribe button down below and if you click the bell icon YouTube will notify you when I come out with new videos so to continue the story I ended up uh, trading the 2005 or actually I sold the 2005 I've never traded a bike in I've always sold my own motorcycles either through eBay or cycle trader or something like that and I got a 2007 Goldwing with navigation and uh, the orange bike and we rode the wheels off that bike for me you know now some, not like some of you guys some of you guys put hundreds of thousands of miles on your Goldwing but in about two and a half years three years we put about 70,000 miles on that bike which is a lot of riding for us my girlfriend and I bought the Bush Tech trailer to go with it and everything and so I just continued working on that bike and then I think it was about just about the time I got my 2012 Goldwing is when I started really getting more and more into uh, the YouTube videos and to the maintenance videos now I did some maintenance videos on my 2007 but I really got into it on the 2012 and that's when I started producing the uh, DVDs for the uh, 2001 to 2017 Goldwing and then later on uh, kind of pioneered the idea of putting these videos on demand where you could uh, watch them streaming in full HD and or download them and watch them on your computer or your TV or whatever now we're seeing the 8 o'clock traffic this is how insane people drive here by the way because I guess it's the same where you live people in Dallas just it's insane how they drive and so uh, the videos did well and then when of course I made the decision to get the 2018 Goldwing you know doing the maintenance videos was at the top of my list I mean that was that was one of the reasons I got the 2018 Goldwing because now it had become a business and I really uh, had to have the 2018 Goldwing to uh, add to my video library and they have been a huge success uh, like I said in my last uh, motor vlog we sold more 
videos, maintenance videos for the 2018 Goldwing in the first two months than we have sold on the 2001 to 2017 Goldwing in the previous three years. So it's a very popular motorcycle. I think these things are selling better than what anybody realizes. And of course, I think a lot of people that buy this motorcycle realize it's not as maybe even as easy, maybe not as easy to work on as the previous Goldwing. Now there are some things about this Goldwing that are actually easier to do than on the previous Goldwing. For example, uh, I think it's easier to work on the brakes. Uh, you know, you don't have as many parts to take off to get to the brakes like brake pads and things like that. So th some things are actually a little easier. Other things are a bear, like the air filter. Getting to the air filter, on the, I, th I thought the last Goldwing, I thought the previous generation, there's no way, there's no way it could be any harder to get to that air filter than what they had on that previous Goldwing. I was wrong. Honda found a way through engineering and persistence and perseverance and commitment, they were able to make the air cleaner harder to get to. Thumbs up, Honda. Good job. I think what they do is I, I think they, they get an air cleaner element. And they put it on the table and they say, let's build a motorcycle around this. It, it, you know, it really is kind of fascinating, but anyway, for those of you, maybe I'm scaring the hell out of you on doing your own air filter change, but it is doable. It just takes time. And if you go to a dealer and get your air filter changed, you're going to be paying hundreds of dollars in labor because it's, an, it's a time-consuming job, even for a service tech that does it every day. It's a time-consuming job. And one of the things, I, when I work on my motorcycle, I'm getting back to the original theme of why do I work on my own motorcycle. One of the reasons is because I know I'm going to do it right. I'm not in a hurry. When you go to a Honda dealer, that service tech has to get that job done in a certain amount of time because Honda is quoting you a flat rate based on what they think it will take that service tech to do that job. So for an air cleaner replacement, it might be two hours or three hours of labor. Now, the way it works for a service tech to make money, if they quote you three hours worth of labor on a job, he gets a bonus if he gets that done in two hours or two and a half hours. So if the dealer gets three hours worth of labor charge and he gets it done in two hours, he gets a part of that extra hour of labor they charge for. So they're still going to charge you for the three hours. If he gets it done in two hours or one hour, he just makes that much more money. So the service tech has an incentive to work fast. They have an incentive to get the job done quickly. Now, the problem with that is, this is my motorcycle. I want to make sure it's taken apart correctly. I want to make sure it's put back together correctly. I want to make sure he's not just in there ripping out plastic tabs. And that's why when I work on it, and I don't work on other people's motorcycles very often, but I'm sometimes I'm with them while they're working on them. You would not believe how many broken tabs and missing fasteners you'll find on motorcycles that have been worked on at dealers by service techs. It's unbelievable because these guys are in a hurry. They want to make money. They're not... So my point is, when it's your motorcycle, you're going to take the time to see to it that it gets done right. I, I trust my own abilities better than I do that 19-year-old working at the Honda dealer. You know, some people think that you go in there, what you're taking it to a professional. Uh, I'm lucky. I have a dealer that has an excellent service tech. He's been working on Goldwings for 20 years. 
but that's very unusual and a lot of you guys know what I'm talking about you have dealers that have service techs that look like they just got out of prison and you know I want to take my bike to a dealership where the service area is nice and clean and the service techs you know are wearing a nice uniform at least looks professional and I have I'm lucky I have a Honda dealer that you know the service area is nice the service manager is a great guy even though I do my own most of my own work I still take it in to get the tires done but I feel comfortable taking my motorcycle there to have it worked on because it's a nice clean place you know I don't have a problem with them working on my bike you know you go to the Lexus deal I go to the Lexus dealer and look at the service department hell I want them to remove a kidney it's so clean these are things that I think about when I work on my own bike and the reason I do what I do when I do my own maintenance is because number one I'm going to save money number two I know it's going to get done right and number three I'm not in a hurry there's no rush so I enjoy working on my own my own motorcycle I enjoy uh, the process I think it's fun I think it's interesting and uh, I know a lot of you do too. I get all kinds of emails and comments from you, so I know a lot of you guys work on your own bikes too. That's my history. That's a little bit of the story. I'm sure I'll tell you more later. Uh, go into a little more detail on some of the different bikes I've had, but I think that's enough for today. So thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time on Cruise Man's Motovlogs.